Good evening and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Judge Bloodworth, uh, as the Game Master is called in, uh, in Dungeon Crawl Classics and here as well in uh, Weird Frontiers RPG, which is uh, strongly based on Dungeon Crawl Classics. And uh, today's video, I am going to be uh, going over character creation, or at least a good portion of it. Uh, there might be some other finishing touches to go along the way uh, thereafter, but, um, you know, I did pick up a, a form-fillable uh, character sheet on, on Drive-Thru RPG, which is available for, it's pay what you want. I paid the suggested $1 uh, price for it, and um, so I, I will have that, and I'll actually go through and, and switch screens so that you can see that being done as we go through, and... Uh, Hopefully everything works out fine and uh, we don't have to, um, I don't have to switch back and forth too often during this presentation. So if this is the first time that you're seeing my coverage of Weird, Weird Frontiers, just to put it into context, uh, the first time I played this game as a player was in, uh, in April at Rising Phoenix uh, Games Con. And uh, had such a great time with it. Absolutely loved the game. So much so that I, you know, dropped the $100 to actually get this massive, huge, uh, you know, huge book here. Plus the other, the other one over there, which is the, uh, uh, the Tombs of, Ma uh, the Tomb of Magic. Uh, and uh, combined up, they came with a PDF, which you will see is... Uh, over 900 pages total. Uh, so, I mean, it is a huge, huge system, loads of fun to play. And it is something I'm going to do in another video uh, concerning this and talking about the next game convention that I am going to be attending. And uh, I'm just waiting for it to open up so I can, uh, so I can post my event. And that event is going to be Weird Frontiers. But I'm going to handle that in a totally separate video that I'll probably put up either tomorrow or, um, or, or over the weekend. So without further ado, let's start taking a look at Weird Frontiers. I'm just going to pause this for a second. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump right into character creation. Sorry about that little... Uh, disruption. And here we go. So character creation. As with any standard role-playing game, you as the player assume the role of a hero that you create using your imagination, the Weird Frontiers world, world uh, rule book, and some oddly shaped dice. If you're lucky enough to have already played Goodman Games Dungeon Crawl Classics, you are already familiar with the concept of a funnel-styled adventure. The funnel is one of the more unique elements of DCC and is also ported into Weird Frontiers. Typical funnels begin with average townsfolk, better known as zero-level characters. Whether these poor souls choose their current path of adventure or are pulled into it by nefarious machinations, characters are initially ill-suited for the title of hero and often meet a grisly demise at some point along the way. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to be doing a funnel for the convention that I'm going to run this in. Uh, considering the funnel and, the, and that most of your townsfolk will meet a horrific fate if the judge is doing their job correctly, it's best to create between one and four level zero characters in the hopes that one will find a way to survive and see the light of day. Should one or more of your characters survive the adventure, the lucky souls will be deemed fated by a higher power and transform into one of the 12 classes better suited to take on the unspeakable evils haunting the western frontier. Note, alignment is normally a step included with character creation when playing many RPGs, including DCC. But Weird Frontiers takes a different approach to determining the starting point 
of a character's moral compass. Actions taken, along with decisions made during zero-level play, help determine what each character is made of at the end of the day. All characters beginning level, uh, zero level play are walking the line on the path tracker found on character sheet and also see path system on page 28 of this rule book. So here are the step by steps. So you're going to roll 3d6 uh, and jot them down totally on a scratch piece of paper. Um, You'll do this until all six scores are generated, and then you're going to assign each score in the order rolled. So this is using very old school. Uh, you roll them, and your strength, agility, stamina, personality, intelligence, and luck will be listed in order as you go down. Um, now, there's there's tons of other you know leeway that you have as a judge in this game you can let them assign uh those scores you can use different rolling strategies as well whether it be uh roll 46 and drop the lowest or whatever for the purposes of this i'm going to do as it states here rolling all six stats 3d6 straight down the line um i won't be able to show you the dice rolls themselves on camera You'll hear the dice rolling as I input them onto the character sheet. So that is followed by determining the hit points. You roll D4 for each character and modify the result by any applicable stamina modifier. This is the character's starting hit points. Once again, you will most likely use the you're starting out first level with maximum hit points of uh, a four plus your modifier. Um, and considering how challenging this game system is, uh, that's a pretty good idea to do. Um, because even with, you know, four or five or even seven hit points at first level, your character is very, very squishy. All right. Um, moving on, determine grit. Grit is a new ability created specifically for Weird Frontiers to help simulate the physical and mental stress a character can withstand while facing things best left unseen. Grit is a fluctuating ability determined by adding the character's stamina and personality and dividing that number by two rounded down. So um, you'll start off with a certain amount of grit and then that will ebb and flow throughout your gaming experience. Should a character's luck ability be enough to warrant a plus or minus modifier, roll a D30 modified by their luck modifier and consult the luck sign birth auger chart, which means that if it's only a zero, uh, you will not roll on that chart. Once the result is determined, it always affects related rolls by the amount of the original luck modifier, even if the character's luck ability later changes enough to lower or raise the modifier, all right? So, uh, yeah, if your luck changes later on permanently uh, and you suddenly gain a plus or a minus, then uh, you, you will not roll on this here, um, on this chart, number one, and number two, its uh, initial modifier will still apply. Rolling on the random occupation chart to determine what sort of career the character had before the adventure starts. Uh, rolling zero level characters, uh, roll a d4 and record the result as dollars to spend on the vittles and gear and such. Um, zero level characters use a d14 as their fumble die and a d6 as their critical die. So you have different die when you're when you're rolling to see if you're fumbling or you're you're scoring a critical hit. The path system replaces the standard alignment system found in DCC RPG, which I already mentioned. Uh, Weird Frontiers uses three methods called saving throws to avoid danger: fortitude, reflex, and willpower. Record each bonus granted from a tribute for each saving throw. Stamina modifiers, fortitude. 
agility modifies reflexes, personality modifies willpower. The classes, as you'll see, also modify those um, as well. So attributes, as you can see, it's strength, intelligence, personality, stamina, agility, and luck. Um, I will make these roles uh, and show you the character sheet. And as you can see, uh, basically everything from a 9 to a 12 is a 0. And then I will come back to this when I'm, uh, I'll come back over to this when we're going over the roles themselves. All right, so I'm just going to switch this real quick here. So I want it to be on the screen and I wanted to make sure that you are seeing the proper view. Yes, you are. All right, so, so here's the character sheet and it is form fillable. Now, I'm thinking of um, making a very generic class here, right? So I'm going to just start off with a gunslinger. Uh, we'll see how everything else rolls out. Maybe he, he or she won't be a very good gunslinger to begin with. And the rest I'm going to determine later. Now, this is going to be a first level character. Um, the let's it's, Sometimes it's hard to see. I know speed is their movement rate. And so almost all humans is 30. Um, the path is going to be on the line. And now I'm going to roll the dice rolls. So uh, again, bear with me. I can't show you the dice rolls and you have you looking at this at the same time. So you will have to trust me. Um, so I rolled a total of an eight for strength. Not a very good strength. And I know that's going to be a minus one modifier. My agility. I rolled a 9, 10, 11. An 11 agility. So that's going to be a zero modifier. Uh, my stamina. I rolled an 8, 9, 10, so a 10 stamina, and that's going to be a 0 as well. So far, not um, very average. So far. Uh, here we go. We have a personality of a 13, and I am fairly certain that's going to be a plus 1. My luck is going to be an eight. So not very lucky and going to be a minus one there. Um, not rolling great. <laughs> and intelligence, intelligence is a nine. So nine and that's going to be a zero as well. So, so far this is what we have and I'm going to take a look at the next stage. Now, you will get some additional modifiers based on which uh, class you're taking. So if I'm going with a gunslinger, I know that gunslingers are going to add a, uh, a modifier to their role. So um, so in my luck, I had no, no plus or no, I had a minus. So on my luck, I'm actually going to have to roll this D30. So I am rolling a D30, which, uh, you know, is a specialty die for DCC and this game system. And I rolled a three. And so Magpie's Whisper, apply the modifier in any attempt to mimic sounds and voices, make an intelligence check versus an average DC of eight, Further multiply by the judge if needed. All right, so Magpie's Whisper. So this is, I'm going to just put this in here. And this is based on intelligence. So it'll add that. And so now I'm going to go in here and under this luck birth sign, um, I'm going to put Magpie's Whisper. Wow, that doesn't... Uh, that doesn't do it very well, or it spaces it a lot. All right, Magpie's Whisper, and it's uh, 
I'm going to just put INT so I know which modifier it's going to use and which is nothing <laughs> for there. And now we're going to go down. So saving throws. So my reflex, uh, my fortitude, reflex, and willpower. So let's see. Um, my reflex is going to be a zero. My stamina is going to be a zero. My willpower is going to be a plus one. So that's good. Um, now we're going to continue on occupations. So now I'm going to roll uh, a D100. Now let me get my, my dice here for the D100. And I rolled a 60. So let's see what the occupation was of this character before a doctor. So the doctor is going to start with a surgical knife and a medical kit. So I am going to put here a doctor. So uh, occupation doctor. Um, interesting. So you know what? I might not. The gunslinger won't work here. So I'm I'm not going to go with the gunslinger. Now remember, I said I was going to start off with uh, with maximum hit points at first level. So he only has four. Armor class is ten plus your. Um, Plus your reflexes modifier or agility modifier. So just an AC of 10. Grit is stamina plus personality divided by two, rounded down. So that is going to end up being a 23. So a 22 rounded down is grit is going to be 11. And let's, let's take a look at classes and see what might suit this character best. Now, classes are, are kind of complex. Um, there is one healing class that might make some sense here. So let's go to, um, let's go to that healing class. Uh, not a... The healing class is like a, a, a reverend kind of character. Uh, gambler, no. Yeah, he doesn't have great stats. <laughs> so he's going to struggle no matter what. So he better go with the healing class. Let's see. Um, just looking for it. I wish they had. Uh, that's the one thing I, you know, about this PDF that's not great is that it does not let you. Um, just click on the table of contents and bring you right there. Um, so let's take a look at the healer. Uh, I mean, I could have looked up the page, but this is moving just as long, uh, just as fast. A month Blanc is like an alchemist kind of character. Um, month of Bonk, month of Bonk. Uh, critical die. Um, now I want to go with, I do want to go with the reverend type character. It's taking forever to get there. Here we go. So let's see. You spent your days in a peaceful existence, tending to the spiritual needs of a flock. That is until the events of the seven days. All right. So um, this is still a, you know, basically a healer. It's like a cleric kind of character, which makes somewhat more sense. Um, so they use DA to determine their hit points at each level. Um, oh, so that's a little bit different. So... That will make him have a D8, so eight hit points of damage. That's very helpful. Um, action die. I'm looking for any bonuses to um, abilities. Uh, class abilities, divine healing, and such. Um, I don't see anything. So I'm going to go with uh, 
the revelator revelator all right and let's see um class is going to be and he's going to end up with eight hit points at first level all right and then there is the class now one of the things with this uh character sheet that's a bit of a you know bit of an issue is that um it does not give you enough room uh space to actually drop in the full description of all of your um abilities right so i'm just going to put in the one so you can see divine healing and i'll see how much of this i can actually get in there all right um so this is where you're going to put your special abilities and let's see it really doesn't cut and paste very well so it takes some time and everything to you know throw this in there um but that is the you know that's one of the downsides to this form fillable i wish that you would be able to drop more in there um so and then we'll go back to so i'm going to go back over to this view here so as you can see i mean you're when you're using that system of um you know 3d6 down the line um it really forces you to make some other decisions that you might not have looked to do uh and you know changing up different character classes that might not work out uh, as well and everything there are still other aspects of the character sheet that would still have to uh fill in and i'll, I'll switch back to that in a moment um actually in this moment i will switch back to it and so there's a lot more to fill out on here you know obviously you're going to name your character you're going to go through and um you know i'll put in their initiative so which die do they use for initiative uh melee bonus uh you know range bonus which is probably zero and zero or maybe even minus one and the range is going to be uh, a zero um the crit die and the fumble die I'll, I'll have to look at the character class again and see their crit die is a d8 and the fumble die is a d12 so it's not great right um it makes it harder to do a critical and it makes it more likely to get a fumble all right when you're when you're going smaller die makes it harder to do um larger die makes it easier to happen right so that's uh, one thing and, and it works the same way with combat as well so if you're rolling a you know if you're rolling a d24 you have a much better chance of being successful at hitting something um but if you're rolling a d24 for your fumble die <laughs> that means that you're mo more likely to uh, fumble as well and then i'll put in the um you know the weapons that uh they start with uh they start with um Signature weapons typically choose firearms, clubs, bladed weapons when forced to fight. And like I said, the he started as a doctor. So he starts with a scalpel. And um, so let's see. A doctor. What did I roll? Um, a 60? Oh, uh, yeah. So a surgical knife, which is only a D3, and a medical kit for a uh, special item. I'd still have to roll for their starting uh, starting money and let's see occupation saving throws uh let's see where the starting amount of money is um i don't remember exactly where it is it's not a huge of huge importance anyway um let's see if i come across it really fast Weapon training, choosing the path. Um, like I said, I would have, so there's only three paths, right? So this is the alignment system. It's basically good, neutral, and evil, um, or good, neutral, and uh, lawful, neutral, and chaotic, if you want to look at it that way. Here it's called righteous, walking the line, and the damned, all right? So that is your good, your neutral, and your evil. And... They talk about 
you know, as you're going through your adventuring and everything, um, you know, you can move along on this, you know, on this line here and it makes it, um, it makes it um, impact your interactions, your social interactions, primarily with NPCs. And I'll, I'll get into that more so when we're doing, uh, when I'm, when I'm covering actual play. So I'm going to leave it there with, uh, you know, with covering that aspect of it. So as you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly simple system to actually implement and, and put in um, and roll up a character. It really didn't take that much time at all uh, to roll up a character. Yeah, clearly I have to um, put in all of their abilities and such. And, um, you know, when you're in a convention space and you're going to be doing with, uh, you know, pre-gens most likely, uh, I plan on just making like 10 characters up and then just putting them out to the players and letting the players choose, you know, five characters and we'll roll with that. So they'll have a good selection of them. And uh, like I said earlier, I'm going to do a whole separate video just talking about uh, preparation for my convention play. Uh, and that is going to include, um, you know, potentially some participation uh, from from channel subscribers as well. Um, if you're interested in doing, su you know, such a thing and play testing an adventure that I'll write uh, specifically for um, ShireCon in September. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it, it's it's a very easy system to create a character uh, and um, it's a lot of fun when you're playing it. And, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, I'll actually make this character into an NPC and just kind of test out to see how, you know, how much this character actually survives because the character really doesn't have tremendously bad or even good, um, you know, they're, it's a pretty balanced character as far as balanced and mediocre all in the same shot, you know? So it's, uh, you know, nothing terrible and nothing, uh, nothing uh, really, really exciting. That's going to be like, wow, you're going to shine. Um, kind of a middle of the road kind of a character. So hope you enjoyed that. Um, you know, it's almost Friday. So, uh, you know, enjoy your weekend upcoming. And uh, as always, I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen or at a gaming table at a convention sometime soon. And uh, as always, questions or comments are welcome. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, like and share and, and do all of that stuff uh, to help the channel keep on growing. Um, the more outreach I get, uh, the, the better um, the commentary is coming on in. And, uh, and the more suggestions I get. Uh, if it wasn't for uh, comments and everything on this channel, and, uh, and also in the Facebook groups and everything that I'm involved with and, and Twitter and such, um, then um, I wouldn't have ever discovered this game at all if it wasn't for the context that I've made, um, you know, on social media uh, revolving around gaming. So uh, certainly appreciative of that. And, uh, you know, as always, have a great weekend and take care.